welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 16th and 17th of May 2011. I was unable to post a report yesterday because of technical problems with my computer. So today is going to be a combination of the two days. Yesterday, NASA had a successful launch of the Space Shuttle Endeavour. This spectacular picture was taken from a passing airliner at the time of the launch. Neat, huh? We only have three numbered regions on the Sun today. Region 1208 is disappearing off the west limb and will only be with us for another day or so. Region 1214 has grown rapidly over the last couple of days, but in the last few hours has shown a few signs of decay. Region 1216 came over the limb yesterday and is a single large spot, so I don't expect very much out of that region either. Let's take a look at the evolution of these regions using the Solar Dynamics Observatory HMI data. First, in the white light movie, we can see the development of region 1214. It initially grows, but then some of the trailing spots seem to decay. Region 1208 near the west limb seems to be decaying, but that may be an optical illusion due to foreshortening as it approaches the limb. Looking at the magnetic movie, there doesn't seem to be any significant growth anywhere in the last few hours, so I'm not expecting very much activity out of any of these regions. Using the GOES X-ray sensor, we can see what flares have occurred in the last 48 hours. Yesterday we had a couple of C flares, but that's been about it. The background has increased to about the B2 level, but that still indicates a pretty modest level of solar activity. In the same period we've had a couple of chronal mass ejections, and those are marked on the plot with vertical red bars. First let's take a look at the flares, and for that we will go to the Solar Dynamics Observatory's Atmospheric Imaging Assembly, and look at the coronal movies. I think it's fairly plain that Region 1208, near the west limb is the brightest and also the most variable region so that's probably where most of the flares came from. In the Helium 304 movie we can see that the spotless plage region near disk center again produces a filament eruption towards the end of the second day. Here is the same sequence but at a higher magnification. Note the twisting of the filament as it erupts. Now we will go to the Saho coronograph data to see the coronal mass ejections. First the C2 instrument which is the smaller field of view. And then we'll look at the C3 instrument which gives a much wider perspective. I made a short video yesterday about the comet that was crashing into the sun which may be of interest to some of you who haven't seen it as yet. This morning there was no more data about the comet so I'm not posting an update today. We can find out what's happening to the solar wind that is impacting the Earth from the ACE spacecraft at the L1 point. We can see at the moment that we're in a fairly high speed and low density flow, which is typical of that of a coronal hole, which may create unsettled conditions but will not produce a major geomagnetic storm. The NOAA satellite shows what are going on in the auroral zones, and is looking much more disturbed than it has been for quite some time. The KP index in the meantime has been varying between 2 and 4, where 4 is considered unsettled. The background image to our summary today is from the X-ray imager on GOES-15. So in summary then, the sunspot number is at 63, the X-ray background is increasing to about the B2 level, radio sun is at 95 solar flux units, solar wind speed is increased to 580 km per second, solar wind density is at 0.2 protons per cubic centimeter, and the KP index is varying between 2 and 4. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are quite likely, but a very low probability of M and X flares. Sunspot number I think will go lower, coronal mass ejections will continue to occur, but the chance of a major geomagnetic storm is very low at the moment. I have listed in the description box below details of several useful sites. If you want to see previous editions of The Sun Today, go to my channel. There's also some excellent information on current solar conditions at several NASA and NOAA channels, and also a good source of information is spaceweather.com. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.